There's an old expression that says, if it is to be, it's up to me. And I'm particularly fond of and proud of, and I got a strong belief in that expression because it's absolutely true. Regardless of what the issue is or the problem is or what have you, then we all need to realize that we can make a personal difference in what goes on in our lives, socially, politically, economically, academically, and all other kind of ways. So I'm just happy that in this community and through an organization, we have a vehicle uh, through which uh, everybody can become involved. And if it's up to you, then this serves as a platform for you to be involved and, and for you to make a difference. And not only that, for you to express what you think can be done to make our neighborhoods, our schools, our organizations, our government, and our community better. This is a call to action. A call, call to, to action. action. I'm your host, Alex Habersham, and I have with me today, and I hope I get a title right this time, I always have fun with it, uh, 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 Miss, uh, Miss uh, Nancy Cleveland. What's your title, Nancy? I'm the Communications and Development Associate. You know, the Communication and Development Associate, and Miss Catherine Dennis, who is the president of the Community Foundation. Okay, they are both with the Community Foundation. I gave uh, Nancy another organization the other time. She said, no, <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> not Nancy, I mean uh, yeah, Catherine. Catherine. Uh, she said, don't get me fired, I love my job. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but on a very, very serious note, uh, this is the second comment of uh, uh, an activity in our community called On the Table. And that's what we're going to discuss today. So first of all, uh, Catherine, would you kind of give me a historical perspective? Absolutely. On the Table. On the Table is um, a, we are fortunate in Macon to be a Knight Foundation community. And Knight Foundation um, saw the Chicago Community Trust good work and good results from their first On the Table, which is a community-wide day of conversation. And they, the Knight Foundation, gave resources toward bringing it to more communities. And we are one of 10 communities wow. in um, around the country that are doing this. And um, so we're very blessed to do that. And this is our second year of being able to of being able to have these these conversations. And and the the reason that Knight Foundation feels strongly about it, and that the Community Foundation applied to be a part of this of this cohort, is that that in today's world, it seems a lot of times that we're losing that um, that personal touch. They'll be get to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation like we're doing today. Mm -hmm. um, that they're just that people are more willing just to pick up their phone and text or call or just it's just not to do an Instagram. But it's not the same thing as having a personal conversation and being able to develop a relationship and and, and meaningful. <clears throat> have a meaningful discussion. You're not going to have anything meaningful in a text or a 140 character tweet or whatever it is. I mean, so so for us to, to be able to step in and 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 be able to lead it and we lead it. It's the community foundation. I mean, it's the, it's our communities uh, event. On the table belongs to the community, not the community foundation, not Knight Foundation. It belongs to everyone who participates. Right. And then one of the problems that we have in our community, there is too much us and them, you know. So what the On the Table does, it kind of eliminates that barrier by inviting people. Of course, it could be, uh, well, I'll let Nancy talk about that in a minute, but it, it could be any combination, if you please, of individuals coming together across the table. Well, just talk about the mechanics of On the Table, Nancy. Well, On the Table is an all-day, everywhere event. Um, so throughout the day, you will have conversations in parks and libraries and churches and schools, um, in restaurants, wherever you feel comfortable. And it doesn't have to even be a three-course meal. It could be nachos and mm -hmm. margaritas. It could be trail mix and water, whatever you feel comfortable providing. But again, it's leaving the Instagram and the Facebook comments and having a real conversation around those solutions, but also taking that conversation and turning it into action and there's a number of ways you can do that a lot of people convene with the people that they talk with and they go ahead and do uh, different projects
projects together. Some people apply for our mini grants with the Conversation to Action mini grants to give some funding to those ideas. Or other people continue the conversation throughout the year to address the, the passions and interests that they have around specific issues. So there's a lot of ways to move beyond the table. Okay, now walk us through, if you would. Okay. Uh, let's say that there's somebody interested. Let's say there's an individual, a club, an organization, a church or a nonprofit who looks at these beautiful faces that those over there. And, and, <laughs> and, and say, hmm, I want to get involved in this. Can I do big picture and then we'll go to little yeah, picture? Yeah, so go ahead. And, all right, so first, think about it two ways. Am I comfortable? Do I, or do I want to be comfortable or uncomfortable a little bit? And so do you want to have, if you want to host a table, do you want to do it and just have your friends and have a private table where you just decide that you're going to have people that you know and y'all want to talk about the community, then have a table. Let us know though, because we really want to be able to track the who's having a table, but also we want to make sure that you take a survey, which we'll talk about later. But right. but so right. it's but we want to know you're a part of it because part of the power of this is saying that like last year we had five thousand people, six hundred wow. tables. So we need to know who's talking. And uh, so private, you can just if you, if that's your comfort zone more power to you, go for that. Just what we want is for people to really take the time to talk to each other and talk about our community and um, and then how we can make a difference individually and collectively, but it's not they are gonna do something, it's right. what are we right. going to do. Right. But the other side of that is we're looking for organizations and even individuals to host public tables and that's where um so so i might say all right we had a lovely family or couple last year open their home up to people that to strangers mm -hmm. and, and so on our website there'll be a place where you can list your table and people can sign up to come but churches um, all of our rec centers the commissioners the hospitals um mm -hmm. schools um the library system, I mean, think about it, organizations, universities uh, are all going to participate and most of them, some of them will have some neighborhood private tables, associations. neighborhood associations, yeah. yes, yeah. they'll yeah. have it. So, so, and then you'll be able to, so we need hosts to do those private tables and public tables and then we're going to turn around and need people to go and participate. So I'm going to let Nancy kind of talk so about the logistics say, of our website. Let me point too. my yeah. finger at the camera for okay. just a minute. Okay. Okay. You, need to be involved yes. too often people sit around mm -hmm. and complain and talk about well that doesn't concern me or they don't treat me right or this not happening or what have you but this is an opportunity for you to express it and we want everybody i mean that, this you know what uncle sam says <laughs> i want you yes so <laughs> uncle alex is saying this means you <laughs> We want everybody involved. I'm sorry to interrupt you, no, but I, no, I, I, I want that. Yeah, I'm and I, I'm, so about it's, it's, and I'm so serious about this. And I'm so serious because I have worked truth. my whole yes, life exactly. yes. in trying to make this community better. And then I know for a fact, you know, if you don't play, you can't win. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. You yes, know, sir. So you've got to play. Go so y'all come play. Come play. <laughs> I mean, even going off of what Alex just said, like if there's a way, a lot of people um, mention ways that they could do things better or things that are not getting done. This is your opportunity to show me that better way, to bring that idea that other people aren't listening to. And we give you not only the platform to listen to it, but we make it very easy for you to sign up. So if you go to onthetablemaking.com, you'll see a link right at the top of the website website that says uh, host a table. It'll just click there and the form will be right there on the website. You'll fill it out, you'll indicate if it's a public or private table, and we'll receive that information on our end and follow up with you. And it's just as simple as that. Uh, getting closer to the date, more so like the beginning of October, we'll be listing those tables by location, by time, and by topic. So it'll be easy for you to click, register, and uh, reserve your seat at whatever table it interests you. Um, and that's the, that's just a simple one. To and that's it. for the public table, so the registration. Public. Yes, private tables won't be listed on the website, so you would have to receive an invitation from that host to join that. But table. we'll give those hosts the, the, the they'll will give you uh, an Eventbrite link, so you can yes. invite your guests to the to your, to your table, table, table to your table. And so you can just we'll try to make it them. easy, easy for you. Exactly, and people are very familiar with Eventbrite, with Facebook, with email, and any of those three ways. 
you can invite and track and manage your guests. So um, it's really one, two, three. It's not a complicated situation. Sometimes we think it's so easy. It makes people not really fully understand it, but you literally invite your friends to come and, then and talk. We're going to have some host training too. So if you sign mm -hmm. up to be a host, um, there are several ways that you can get more comfortable with it. First, we have a little, what we call our toolkit. You get a nice little tote bag full of all kinds of stuff. You'll get a host toolkit that has some prompts. And we have some cute bags coming yeah, in. Yes, and, um, and you'll be able to do, go, so you can do it. You'll get your, your kit, but you also can come to a live training. We'll feed you a meal. You can sign up on onthetablemaking.com for a um, host training. Host, as well. host training. You, we also, Nancy, you'll see Nancy's smiling face doing a webinar on how to be an effective host. <laughs> and and it, it, that's like be 30 minutes or so worth of a webinar. You can put her on double speed if you want to get Exactly. Food, just, you know. just fast forward to the important <laughs> part. The important part. And if you want to get your simple. bags from us, from the Community Foundation. Yes, okay. and if you were, uh, do an online training um, and you're a don't receive a bag just email us or stop by the office we'll have them ready to get out there um, the host training our the registration for host training is available online as well so if you go to on the and click on interested you can sign up for host training um, and you can click your days uh, the upcoming dates will be September 18th September 26th and September 30th we'll have more live trainings in October and we'll post those dates as they're scheduled so whether it's through a webinar whether it's in person you will get the training, you will get the tools, you will get the resources, and we will help you. Or if you just can wing it because you feel comfortable. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's really, some of us, some of us, Alex, we can just sit down and have a yeah, have, yeah. help a conversation, yeah. but we have prompts for you. And right. when I say prompts, we have seven questions that are just general questions. Like, what do you say when you brag about making? Or um, what, what would you do with a hundred dollars? Yeah, what would you do if you only had a, if you had a hundred dollars in one day? What would you do to make our community better? Those are some general questions. But because this is our second year, we had um, last year we had a survey that we asked you to complete after your conversation, and we took the five most pressing issues that adults identified and that youth identified, and we've we've developed some questions some for you to break table topics and thought starters around those topics as well, um, po reducing poverty, increasing economic prosperity, um, crime, um, race, race relations. I mean, so after we have school after school activities, bullying. I mean, there's some, there's some opportunities. We just thought sometimes that you just need something to get the conversation. Right. But I promise you, once you ask that first question and people get comfortable, you can't make people be quiet. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's an expression that says the proof is in the pudding. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, and then I, the, the, the activity has been historically successful. And I'm going to approach it from two angles. First of all, I'm going to talk about the table yes. that Billy Pitts and I sponsored. Yes. The topic was on improving, enhancing uh, uh, African American business, and in particular, and economic development uh, in general. Yes. And it was so much fun. We had had it over at the Triangle Business Center, and it works. <clears throat> it was not a whole lot of work to get it done. We invited people. We got somebody to record it, which is important. Yes. You don't want this conversation to go to waste. Correct. So I was lucky enough to get the young lady, uh, uh, Trudy Lawrence, yes. at SBDC to, to, to be the recorder. Now that's my experience with On the Table last year. We're going to do another. Now talk about some of the other experiences, you know, of other kinds of tables that people had and talk a little bit um, a little bit more about the survey and what people said. Okay. Um, some of some tables that I think were pretty powerful. Um, there was uh, a there was a, a breakfast meeting at the Dempsey and wow. um, the Newtown and the Urban Development Authority sponsored with the, the Dempsey for the Dempsey residents and then for, for other professionals and who wanted to come to dinner or to breakfast. And one of the most interesting things that came out of it was that the Dempsey residents said all the work for downtown is just going for, for all those Mercer students. And the young professionals were thinking that the Dempsey people were just coming out and sitting on the sidewalk and not doing anything. And so, but it was so interesting though because once they started talking about it, the some of the young professionals thought, well, you know what? 
I thought some of those people were homeless. I didn't realize that they were just right, a, right, elderly right, on a fixed income right. looking for a place to sit. So they, um, so, and then, and then the, and then what they were able to tell the Dempsey residents was, you know, a lot of these activities you would enjoy. And it's not, these are, these are all kind of residents from all over our community, really from all over the region that are coming downtown, not just Mercer students. And so they, they put up, they have a bulletin board there, old school, <laughs> but they put up, they, now they put flyers up. Newtown goes and puts flyers up about upcoming events. Right that are going on yeah. so so again you wouldn't have had that if, if, if you hadn't had a, a, a mechanism to get those two groups of people to talk you wouldn't have realized they would they have a different connection now because again they're friends I mean and I've, I've actually yeah. seen a noticeable increase at from the um, residents downtown at events yes. as a concert that I went for uh, last first Friday there was a noticeable amount of residents there and I think it's about getting from behind the screen and really making that personal touch <laughs> and they feel invited they feel included it's a similar thing that happened with Scott Mitchell's table he had it at Doughboy's Pizza Shop and he included the homeless from daybreak and it wow. was so interesting the feedback that he got from interacting with this population many of them told him this was the first time I've ever been invited to a restaurant usually I'm walking by or I'm being kicked out and actually we would love a homeless shelter and all these great ideas but what we really need is a bathroom we need a public bathroom and Scott has done his due diligence to get all of that stuff presented to the Commission and and we'll be presenting a public bathroom to the homeless. That came from a conversation. Um, there you was gonna actually do one? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's wow. gonna be opening in a few weeks. He wow. was a recipient of a conversation to action grant. Yeah. But what he realized too, and I think that this is important for the people who will be applying to the grants or for the people who have ideas that they haven't seen manifest in this city, there's a lot of red tape to getting things done. After he had that conversation, he applied for the grant, he received the thousand dollars, he thought, let me go get a bathroom and put it somewhere. But who's gonna maintain it? Who's gonna clean it? Who's gonna lock it? What land are you gonna put it on? Is it gonna be private or public? And he realized all the things that you have to go through to get a good idea done. So, I mean, it took time, but he got it done. He saw it through. But there, but th those are, I think, very powerful ones. Mine is a simple one where we had one in the um, the community foundation hosted one at the um, South Macon Recreation Center, Big County Recreation Center. We didn't have very many tables. Like, Y'all, South Macon, we need more tables down there. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't have very many, and we and we want to have lots of tables in every zip code. And so we went down there, but I, I, I made a friend down there. I would never have met her. She works with Walgreens. So she has a, she has a, four children, um, and I just. I, but our paths would never have crossed and she's become more involved she's come to, to activities I see her out now but she didn't know all this was going on and I'll say that a lot of tables people would say one of the, com the conversations would drift to well people don't know all the resources that are in our community Absolutely. and we need we need to connect those homeless people with resources or the or the person that needs housing and but what they didn't realize was that that there really are a lot of resources out there and they didn't know who to, to tell them and then sometimes do we know do all the people that need those services really know about the resources and so one of the things you'll see in our host toolkit this year are three pages worth of, of resources that people can go to that just that and Jill Vanderhoek with community partnership was very helpful in, in, consolid, in consolidating all that information because there are a lot of organizations doing great work but this is an opportunity for our community to know about those organizations too. And so we, we took three three pages of that of that twelve page booklet just to, to say all the good work that people are doing. Right. So that when you're having a conversation, if something comes to comes up about um, about health care or something, you know, where can you get health care? Housing. Housing, whatever, we've got some resources in there and we and and it we know it's not all encompassing. So if you have if you have other resources, share them with us. We will we'll add, we'll add them because we want to continue to have a have it shareable. And the resource guide will be available on um, at the website on the table making as a PDF. You can download and print it or you can email it to people and distribute it. Um, and it was just us listening to the feedback yeah. of yeah. participants. Some of my friends had tables and private conversations and what they enjoyed so much is that sometimes you end up talking about your kids and things and it, and, and it was the, it was really focused energy around all the all the things that were going on in the community and some people knew about what was happening downtown some people knew what was going on in the tennis world I mean there but, wow. but but there were but so you could say wow I didn't know all of that and, and I think half of it is is you, you start to feel really good about where we live when you start hearing what everybody else is doing and all the good things that are happening and 
And so it's an opportunity to uh, to really talk with each other about where we live. And then, but then again, to come next and say, all right, but what can I do? What's right. that one little thing? And that's what we're asking. Yeah. What's that yeah. one yeah. little thing? Yeah. Yes. I mean, what's that, you know, and um, one of the trainings that we had was um, for the host, they, they, they said to me, now what are you going to do with all this information? Who's going to take all this information right. and who's you going are. and who's going to and who's going to who's going to do all of our good ideas? I said, no, 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 y'all are going to do your good right. idea. And that's where we came up with the calling them conversation to action mini right. grants. Right. But the also, I, but I will say, the survey is really important. And I know people hate to take a survey. It takes ten minutes, eight to ten minutes. It does, but it is so worth it. First of all, we're going to start to build longitudinal data about our community. But second of all. It's, it, it really gives information to our government, to our um, to foundations, to funders, to any organization. So you're interested. You're in a group of moms. You know what? You know what? What? What do you? It gives you a chance to say, well, I need more park space, or I need a better playground. So I mean, they're just it, so that data is very important. And, and it, it, I was so thrilled when the mayor opened his um, state of the community address and right. interspersed all oh, through yeah. it from on the table with on the table survey data. Um, last year, the greatest concern that that, that, that citizens that, that residents expressed was that around crime and crime and violence. And so um, the sheriff and Crime Stoppers said. We we heard you, and so now they have they announced when they announced their top ten or you know most wanted, and they they rolled that out as a direct response to citizens' concerns that came through in that on the table survey data. So it's really important to fill out the survey so that we have people have that data. And then going off of that data, I always say this line, and Catherine hears me say all the time, men lie, women lie, numbers don't. Yes. And so the numbers <laughs> can tell a story that sometimes your sentiments don't convey. Um, one of the uh, feedbacks that we got from the survey was people feeling a 50-50 split between people feel united and people feeling divided. And it wasn't something that was gonna, that um, led us to bashing the city that yeah. we're from. It actually led people to answer, to ask the question, how can we make people feel more united? And now you have all these different events and all these different volunteer activities that come from that. Um, in addition to the Crime Stoppers, it's not just a good idea, it provides real change. Yes. I was at a council of the clergy meeting and Sheriff Davis stood up and said that around this time last year we had about 30 so murders. This time, um, th around this time this year, it's only been 16. Right. So that's almost a 50% drop off right. from people right. getting involved. Uh, Commissioner Virgil Watkins, who applied for a Conversation to Action grant, he had a table that was right on the steps of City Hall. He told me that the, um, on the table was instrumental in passing the Marijuana Reform uh, Act right. that reduced the, the sentencing to a fine. Right. Right. And that was because it was easier to convene people after he had already had a conversation right with them. Then once he had participated and got the grant, it was easier to bring them back to the table by saying, hey, remember what we talked about? Hey, I have this grant. So it's not just about um, doing little things because you can do little things, but it also leads to big like change as well. So uh, I love On the Table because of that wide scale approach. There was a lady that just didn't apply for a grant at all and just started writing letters to the neighbors that were living, not even her neighbors, to the people that live on the block she worked on. And she started organizing community cleanups wow. monthly without wow. applying for any money just wow. because she was inspired by it. So this is really going to be the opportunity for you to be the change that you wish to see. And like you said in the beginning, if it's going to be, it's up to me yeah. or you. Yes. I would say. <laughs> and, and, and the good part about it is that I, I'm sure, and I didn't know it was that many until I noticed the website, but a lot of people came up with some ideas yeah. that were good enough to get some funding. You know, yes. some people got $500. Some got a thousand, mm -hmm. and and with or without the money, it just shows that when the entire community gets involved, a difference can be made. We have a phenomenal city. Make no mistake about it. A lot of people don't live here and move somewhere else, but make a got it going on. Yes, and then does. we can be a part of making it even better, and by by being involved, so I'm begging you, and I don't beg much. I'm not, if I thought I could get up, I'd get on my <laughs> knees. <laughs> yeah. But I'm we begging you. We might get down, get up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm begging you, I'm begging everybody, you know, to get involved in this process and make your voice heard 
And then it's easy. Oh, I'll tell you something else quickly. If, in fact, you hear this conversation and you are part of an organization, then ask your minister or ask your neighborhood uh, watch leader or mm -hmm. ask your social and savings club, ask your fraternity, your sorority, ask your, the guys you go to happy hour with and everybody. Happy hour is a great place yeah. to have a conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it, froze, it flows yeah. easily. <laughs> so talk a little bit one of you about the grants and how some people receive some funding. Okay, well, um, after On the Table, um, we will open up the application to apply for Conversation to Action Mini Grants. It'll be available on the cfcga.org website. We'll have plenty more details um, when that time comes. Last year, we used $15,000 to fund 17 projects. This year, we'll be giving away $40,000. Wow. So I believe that'll mean double the projects and- Half from the Community Foundation and half from Knight Foundation. Right. Exactly. That's great. That's great. So so it's a great opportunity for you to apply for a grant or again use the opportunity to convene your friends to get your actions done. Yeah, I want to do two things right quick. Mm -hmm. Catherine, go ahead and, and give uh, respect to the Knight Foundation oh, once more. Yeah. And then I want Nancy, when you finish, okay. to go ahead and tell people how to contact you. Okay. Because yes. everybody is not technologically. I will give them a phone. <laughs> yes. 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 Yeah, okay. but talk a little bit about uh, Knight. I am so thankful for um, that the, the Macon Bibb County is a um, Knight Foundation city because the Knight Brothers owned a newspaper here. And even more thankful that Lynn Murphy is the program director and she has such a passion for our community and is a very strong advocate for us in Miami where the, the mothership is, the home office. And um, and so Lynn heard about on the table and and, and, and I would heard about it. So we, we got together and she said, we got to bring that to me wow. and so um, we wouldn't be sitting here if it weren't for for the generosity of Knight Foundation that's there's so the many things uh, that's off the Knight Foundation yes. and I if you guys have to any it. further questions again you can go to the website on the table .com, or you can contact the Community Foundation directly by calling 478-750-9338 or you can email at on the table at cfcga.org Again, that's on the table at cfcga.org. So any of those ways, please get in touch with me, Catherine, any of the staff will be willing to help you. This is a call to action. A call, call to, to action. I'm your host, Alex Havisham, having interviewed both of these young ladies from the Community Foundation, uh, the president, <laughs> and the community outreach coordinator in the person of Miss Nancy Cleaver and in the person of Miss Catherine Dennis. This is a call to action. A, a call, call to, to action. I'm your host, Alex Havisham. Have a great day. Oh, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.